Thanks so much, Marco. And actually, uh, interestingly enough, Klaus was not only your first speaker 10 years ago, but also my first investor in my first company seven years ago. So we share a lot more in common. So I'm very excited to be here and very excited to present. Uh, uh, there's a screen. Very excited to present Lazara. And what we actually do, our core mission is to create a more fashionable world for everyone. No matter if you're a 25 year old student on a low budget or if you're a 45 year old housewife uh, looking for, you know, XXL uh, clothing, we want to be the place where you find that for really, really great value for money gre at great prices. Quick fun facts, or actually serious facts. We're now five years old, so half the age of the Noah. Um, have seen some really uh, aggressive growth in the last five years. So we're the fastest growing tech company in Europe 2016, in Germany by Deloitte 2017. And um, I think what's interesting, we're really a cross-country cross place. So everything that's consumer-facing is actually in Berlin in our headquarters. But a lot, of it, a lot of the commercial, the supply chain, the sourcing, the content production is actually in China and Asia. And that's, I think, also part of our DNA to be really cross-border. And I'll tell you in a second why this is so important for us. We are at 300 plus, almost 400 employees, um, all across continental Europe, so seven languages. Um, 10 core markets, 24 markets where you can ship, and I actually having over 30,000 products, over 200,000 SKUs, which were our exclusive products. So we design them, we have our factories produce them, and then uh, we deliver them to customers. Um, so it's, it's a very, very vertically integrated direct to consumer um, um, platform. So, how, you know, that's actually our business. What makes it so exciting for customers? What are kind of our core USPs for customers? Um, it's actually quite simple. You know, the, the best USPs are the simple ones. We are 20, 30% better value for money, cheaper than uh, traditional fast fashion. So think of H&M, think of kind of the bestseller group, think of, uh, you know, the Inditex group. Um, we d are not only cheaper, but we deliver quicker. So um, from idea to actually uh, having this product on our website, we have approximately two to four weeks. Our time to market is insanely quick. And the third thing is we deliver at low price points, but we still have uh, very, very high operational excellence. And I'll talk about that in a second. First question is how did we end up in the space? Why did we actually want to go into kind of uh, fast fashion, into value retail, into the mass market? And when we started five years ago, we had actually three core beliefs. Um, that I'm happy to present about what's going to shape the future of retail, the future of fashion retail. Number one, quite simple, we really believe that this is a very, very much underserved market. Klaus just mentioned it's, it's kind of the, the bell curve. Um, and uh, it also makes sense that this was underserved. Fashion as a whole is 15% of online retail. Um, our segment at the moment is six to seven percent, uh, um, uh, has six to seven percent online penetration, although it's over 50 percent of the overall textiles market. So why is that? Two, three reasons. One is, of course, a bit of self-fulfilling prophecy. Investors invest, um, are more likely to invest what they usually buy, so they start with the high-end luxury space. But also the customers, you know, um, the early adopters are usually more wealthy ones, so that's why the first wave was really the high-end luxury space, matches fashion, ukes, farfetch which was 10 plus years ago. And then the second wave was really the department store model, you know, um, where you have offline maybe companies like Karstadt or Corte Inglés in Spain. And then uh, the online equivalents were Zalando, ASOS, Amazon, really buying brands, a lot of brands, and uh, uh, w uh, growing through assortment and providing them at full prices. Um, the, l the biggest segment is the mass market, but it's also the most complex one because you are not only buying brands and selling them, you have to kind of fulfill the whole value chain with design, with production, with kind of meeting customer demands. And that's what makes it so tricky at low price points. Um, but this is what we've set out to do. And this was also the major opportunity that we saw because customers um, back then and our customer group did not necessarily have a computer or laptop at home. But the one trigger point that really helped us was everyone had a smartphone and our customers and the mass market was spending more and more time on, on mobile. And now these days, over 80% of our traffic and, and our um, revenues are, are um, on mobile. So this was our first core belief, core belief. Mass market, very much underserved and need to go in. The second one was actually quite straightforward, um, that in our on-demand sharing economy world with Twitter, Instagram stories, every, uh, attention spans are very, very limited. Traditional retail, you have your six to 12 month cycles of 
bringing products into the, into the market, um, which is kind of outdated. Most of the customers see something on Instagram or Facebook, they want to have it in two weeks or three weeks or five weeks max, but not next year because they've completely forgot about it. And this is a very nice study by Goldman that showed the quicker your supply chain, the quicker your time to market, the faster your sales growth, as you can see. And then our third core belief was, you know, cross-border commerce had an amazing growth in the last few years, but it was still kind of, it felt on the one hand side amazing, but on the other hand side, it felt like going back to the 90s, because if you ordered at those companies that were very, very China-based online marketplaces, AliExpress, Wish, a lot of those companies that are in your top app, uh, top downloaded apps uh, on, on the mobile phones, they have, uh, they were growing because of the great prices, they are growing because they actually were mobile first, great user experiences, great products, but um, you know, they are still having a lot of the pitfalls of 45 uh, days delivery times, you have to go to customs to pick stuff up, um, you cannot return, you have it in kind of Chinese English uh, and cannot buy it uh, uh, locally. And our big belief was that the reason that they were growing, if you can combine that, if you combine the great prices, the great kind of speed with uh, a great customer experience, then you can enter a second phase of cross-border commerce. So those were actually our three core beliefs, and um, we went kind of to, to, uh, into our uh, garage, so to say, and um, tried to find three main answers. So the first one is, we believed really in next generation cross-border commerce. So not only investing into price, but also into localization quality, which seems kind of straightforward, but no one has been doing um, before. So you invested into very local language, customer service, um, you know, all the standards that you would expect from the high-end luxury or the full price segment, really at the mass market level. And the same is actually true for the quality and experience. So we have, yes, we produce the products ourselves, so we can maintain great standards, but we also, you know, you may know from, from uh, Netta Portea Hughes catwalk videos or, you know, lengthy descriptions and a lot of content creation for a 500 euro dress. But uh, providing that for a 9.99 or 14.99 euro dress is uh, taking it to a next level. So this was our first thing that we really worked on. The second one is, you know, we saw that speed is important, but then the other question, the next question is, how do you really decide what you want to put onto the website? And um, when we actually checked out with other fashion companies, you mentioned Oscar, others, they just walked to fashion, uh, fashion uh, shows and, you know, just talking and said, you know, green is a great color, I order for next year a few, a few million dollars of this product in green. So it was very, very subjective um, and very, very push-driven. And that's, I think, what's coming back to haunt them. Um, if you read the news, a lot of write-offs for companies like H&M because they stocked um, inventory in the billions. And it's a very, very push-driven business. You just order something um, this year, present it to customers next year, and then really hope that it, that it uh, will sell. Otherwise, you blame the weather. Um, we tried to turn it around and make, make this really a pull-driven model. So we actually crawl the web, see what are actually people uh, searching for, what are they clicking on, what do they share, what do they like, and automate, so to say, the assortment selection and A-B test everything at low quantities, put it onto the website and see if it performs. So because uh, we had an investors conference, I thought the unicorn example might be a really great one because that was also a very big trend last year with our customers. We saw, okay, a lot of people were actually looking for unicorn house shoes. So we launched this product. Um, we're one of the first who had it. And, and then we saw that people you know, wanted more. So um, because of our agility, because of the data, and because of the speed to deliver that, which I'll come to in a second, we're able to not only never go out of stock for this single product in the season, but we're able to launch dozens of similar products um, in the same season, which really resonated with customers and created a very, very competitive edge. So from unicorn hoodies to unicorn onesies, it was a big success, as you can see. Um, and then, which brings us to kind of our third, uh, our third answer, which, uh, which is, okay, now you know what's actually trending. Now you know what customers want. How do you make sure to deliver it to, to consumers in a short amount of time? And this is where our China focus really comes in. So, you know, we went to uh, three, four years ago to, to Asia and really thought, okay, if we optimize everything and make it very, very data enabled and technology enabled, what's the quickest that we can actually deliver the product? And it turns out it's 10 days. Um, so how does it work? 
we, work, we are very, very vertically integrated. So we're not only talking to factories and um, put them onto our technology, but we also work with material suppliers. So the suppliers of the factories, they hold inventory for us. We produce and prototype our products ourselves and then give them and hand them out to suppliers so that they kind of don't have to design and, and produce the products, uh, to design the products do the production. In the meantime, we do all the content creation, the photo shoots, the quality control, and then, um, and then um, store it in our warehouses, which are also in Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Hong Kong, and put it live. And I think that, that's been a major success, and also one of the reasons why we can actually provide those products 20 30% cheaper. It's not because we buy at cheaper prices, but because we save so many costs in the process that we still enjoy the same gross margins, but we save, obviously, on the write-off costs. We don't have to write off that many products, but we also save, obviously, on the logistics costs. So we have high inventory turnovers. We uh, turn inventory 10 plus times a year, which means that you have less logistics costs, less, uh, less write-off risks, and can, obviously, deliver uh, greater products to consumers. So that's kind of our answers to the trends that we've been seeing. In a nutshell, where are we now these days? After five years, with 1.5 million active customers all across Europe, enjoy quite healthy product margin, so 65% plus. As I mentioned, turn inventory over 10 times a year. If you compare it to traditional fashion, that, that's anywhere between two to four times. And uh, having enjoying over 50% of revenue coming from existing customers. So to summarize, super big opportunity in this very much underserved fast fashion value uh, uh, market that we really want to you know, dig, dig into. There's approximately 70 businesses offline that do a billion plus in, in, in revenues in this segment, and at the moment, zero online, and we want to be one of uh, the, the early pioneers who will change that and uh, you know, recreate what the H&Ms, the Inditexes, the bestseller groups in Europe created uh, in the physical world, in the digital world as well. So thanks so much for having me, and uh, see you soon. Thank you.